It's not too bad there, because we can tell what they were. It's an auto run point. Is that is the other thing? Are they both got it? Uh, well, they're both got a big flappy tail. I, uh, they're just this one's the alpha one, so you can see it. It's not right. It's 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 right. Preston uh, this morning, and uh, how are you? All right, huh? How are you? And uh, can I come from Birmingham, you see? 
I and come from uh, Shirley on the Stratford Road. No, Shirley? Yeah, nice, uh, nice area uh, on the Stratford Road. And I, when I was in the uh, first born, like, and I was chilled on in Berlin, near the airport, and then uh, Shirley. And then when war got a bit uh, bombing in Birmingham and everywhere, and Coventry and everything, my parents moved to Cheltenham. And they worked for the air, war office, they worked for the aeroplanes, feathered props on Spitfires and Halifaxes and, and the bombers. So that, and all my dad and his brothers and his, and his brother's sons, they all worked for the aero industry one way or another. My, I had an uncle in, in Wolverhampton on Stafford Road. My dad's brother, another brother, and uh, they worked um, Stafford Road. It was an airport, just or an air, and they used to make build aeroplanes, didn't they? In, on that Stafford Road. So of course, I know the area fairly well. But we came down this morning with those navigation gadgets that you put in your car these days. And I didn't know where the hell I was. I didn't think we, we came off the M6. And, it, and I said, oh, I wouldn't have come this way. And we went all around the side streets, all over the bloody place, right to the door. Marvelous machines, aren't they? These sat mouths. I'd have never found it otherwise, would, would we? <laughs> it looks very excited, doesn't it? <laughs> So anyway, that was that, you see. So then, then I was down in Cheltenham with my parents. And his sister, uh, my, my, my dad's sister, used to throw parties for the Americans that were in Cheltenham at the time, in Thurlston Hall in Cheltenham. My dad had a band, he played, he played violin and uh, double bass. And my mother played accordion and piano. And they had a, a band called Harold Baker and his Collegians. Harold, and that was the name of the road, just by the road here. <laughs> Harold, isn't it? Harold, yeah. Anyway, we, we called the collegians. And uh, my mother fell in love with one of these sergeants called Montgomery. And uh, and in the end, she buggered off to America and left my dad and me. See, so my dad put me in a boarding school in Seven Oaks in Kent with disabled kids. They weren't mentally disabled, they were just physically disabled. And we all we had some fun, you know. One of the guys, he, had to, he, had, he couldn't keep still. He was like this all the time. And the teacher, the beautiful teacher, good, good lad he was. What's your name? He says, yeah. He said, what? He goes, you know, he was all right. He said, write it down. So he wrote it down. Said, oh, cat's meat. Looks like cat's meat. <laughs> So that's what we called him. <laughs> Kept me, would you believe it? Did you ever discover what it was? Eh? What was it really? Graham, Graham Eastman. <laughs> <laughs> His real name was Graham Eastman. And he came from um, Bath, just outside Bath in Somerset. And he came from a farm, he, a farmer's boy. He could, he could plough the field dead straight. And he was like this. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Cats. The little carrots, we had some fun though. That was in Seven Oaks, which is a very nice area. And then, of course, the Germans started throwing bloody rockets at us, didn't they? They did little doodle bugs and, and rockets at the end of the war. So we got, mo oh, we got moved from the school, first of all, to Bronze Grove because of the war, the bombing from, you know, from Germany. An old school, we moved to Groveley Hall, it was called. Oh, just up by the M5. Uh, by that uh, service station there. First one as you come off, off the M6, you go down the M5. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, you brummies? Yeah, you brummies, know what I'm talking about, right, don't you? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we were booming for a while. It was just strange and they come get evacuated to Bloody Road and of all places. And then when we went back, they kicked us out of there because of the noodle box. And we went to um, Strongness in um, Kingsgate in Kent. Rock, Ramsgate, Kingsgate, Petersfield, all around that area now. So I was in some really nice areas of the country. 
before I did, eventually, my, my dad remarried, you see. I did. I, well, I've got an hour, so you don't mind telling me, telling you all this rubbish to you. <laughs> so, well, it makes a change from Star Wars, doesn't it, really? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so he remarried my dad, did he? married a, a girl called Kathleen, who was a dancer from Blackpool, whose mother had property in Blackpool, Manchester, London, and Hastings. So I must have had a few quid, must not Where she got the money from, I'm going bloody fine out. Anyway, that was her mother, you see. And then my, my dad, and we were all going to emigrate to Australia. We were going to go to Brisbane in Australia, because he worked for the aero industry over here. So he could get into a job easy over in Australia at the time. So we, we were all, I mean, I didn't, this is all in the background to my, I was, why I didn't know where I was. I was happy, whatever it was. And anyway, he went into hospital in Birmingham here, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, I mean, Birmingham. Is it Queen Elizabeth? Yeah. And he went in there for a, a gallstone operation and died of pneumonia. Would you believe that? So, and there I am still at school. So, my mum, my mum's gone to America, my dad's died. My stepmother can't look after me because you've got a mother who can't run the house in uh, Hastings because it was a hotel, Tudor House Hotel, Warrior Square, St. Leonard's, which is Hastings. So they put me into a care home in, in Silver Hill, just up north of, um, of Hastings. And I thought, well, now what am I going to do? See, because my stepmother, she was a nice lady. But she couldn't cope with, and plus she had my, a baby, which was my sister, Carol, from me, from my dad, you know. So, uh, and she had rheumatoid arthritis, like my dad's sister. So it was in the, in the family, I think, you know. So it was like chaos, really, to be honest. But I, I was sort of in the innocent, sort of, it didn't bother me anything, really. And I'm walking down the street in, in, in Hastings, or St. Leonard's, and I walked into a little dwarf lady walking up the street. And she says, oh, hello. She says, uh, who are you? I said, I'm Kenny. She says, what are you doing? I said, well, I've just left school, you know, in Seven Oaks on, and, and uh, Margate. We, we were in all over. We were in Seven Oaks, then we were in Birmingham, then we were in Margate. Anyway, I just, and then we always went back to Seven Oaks, Hursley, uh, just by Knoll Park. I don't know if you know Knoll Park. Beautiful area. Seven different types of deer in Noel Park, beautiful place. And anyway, she said, what are you doing? I thought, just left school, I don't know yet. I, I, I think I fancy being into the uh, flowers and plants and, you know, the Robert Chelsea flower show, doing that kind of stuff. I thought I might be able to do that with a bit of luck. But she said, well, are you, are you, are you coming to the show? I said, yeah, I've got tickets, because there was a review on at the, at the Odeon there in, 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 in uh, Low Amway. St. Leonard's, just up Wood London Road there. And there were 20 midgets, midgets and dwarfs. And uh, so we, she said, why don't you go and see the box? He might give you a job. So I went to see Burton Lester, because there was Burton Lester's midgets and there was Harry Lester's hayseeds. They were two American brothers. And I went in to see this Burton Lester. And he said, what do you do? What can you do? I said, oh, I know. Oh, I know. I've just left school, you know. Play a bit of a mouth organ and, and ride a bike, just about. And that's about it, you know, whistle. <laughs> what else? He said, well, I'll, I'll book you, but it can't give you anything now until about January at the Metropolitan Theatre, Edgware Road in London. And that was where I started in 1951. January 51. Yeah, that was my show business uh, first night, as it were, you know. And I can still smell the cats <laughs> backstage. What, what did you do on the first night? Can you remember? Oh, can I help? Can you, <laughs> can you remember your first night? Well. Yeah. There, 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 there. Yeah. So anyway, so then I was on tour with the, with the midget. Do you know what I want to know? I'll ask you a question. Do you know the difference between a midget and a dwarf? Black expressions on all faces. I'll tell you the difference. A dwarf is physically disabled. Not like me, I'm, a, I'm a half a dwarf and half a midget, really. You know, I'm more or less normal, but I'm not, because I've got small hands and 
grandis and arms and, and, and a little bit of bow legged as well. That's dwarfs, disabled, disabled dwarf. And a midget is a miniature man in a miniature form, like perfectly formed, but a miniature, that's a midget. Now you know the difference. So anyway, I was up to with all these people, midgets, different dwarfs, for three years, and I was in Burnley, there's a guy here today from Burnley, from some, he was here just now, and I was there when the Queen got made Queen, I was in Burnley, and it was a hot day like, it's, like it is today, in Burnley it was, oh, it was so hot, and I didn't have the money to go to, to Blackpool, I was, couldn't wait to get the black, fresh air, you know, from sea air, and I just didn't have, have enough money. I was getting five pound a week on tour. Five pound a week. You, you can't get a drink for that. You can't buy a gallon of petrol. Can you? What can you get for five quid? No, nothing can you get. That, that was a week. Five pound a week. And I used to give my landlady three, spend one and save one. Five quid. And I managed to save a hundred pounds in one summer show, getting about five quid to eight quid. Isn't that amazing, mate? And then, hundred quid, well, told my stepmother in Hastings, I thought, just, I've saved hundred quid, she's all good for you. She said, well, but now you've made the first, you'll be, you'll, the rest will be easy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's me introducing the show business. So I, I toured for, for three years in a, in a bus, and a week in every place. Maybe. I've been everywhere, you name it, I've been there, more or less. And then I got, uh, from the, and then the show was finished because TV came in in 1953, the same year that the Queen was made Queen. And TV came in gradually and then it was all bingo halls and, and you know, making, the theatres died, gradually died off. Then we got the clubs going, working men's clubs. Uh, British legions, all kinds of clubs. Masons, because this is a mason's place, isn't it? And we used to do a lot of masonry jobs, you know, ladies' nights, you know, all around London and the South East, basically. Because uh, I, I teamed up with one of the dwarfs from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, because um, we were, I, I teamed up with, well, what happened was I, I could skate, I could roller skate, so I got into ice skating because it was easier to ice skate than roller skate. You know, pretty heavy roller skates. Uh, how I ever did that, I don't know in the world. And um, here she comes, come on, Penny. Lovely lady, Penny. But looking after me, she is. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> she's gonna kill me in a bit. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, where am I? I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm in the ice shows. I did, I did summer show at Blackpool all summer. Pantomime at Christmas, like uh, Babes in the Wood, I was in Babes in the Wood for about five or six years. Then I used to work at the Ritz in Manchester, in Whitworth Street, playing harmonica. Do you know the Ritz? Yeah, and, as well, yeah. Bouncy, uh, Bouncy Dance Club. Yeah. 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 And um, I had a good thing going for six years, I did summer season at Blackpool, 1954. Pantomime, the Ritz, Christmas show, the Ritz. Some of you the Ritz, and I did all this for about six years, 54 to 59. Then in 60, I got it Snow White on Ice at Wembley, that was a Walt Disney production. And we had the real dwarfs, all the dwarfs had masks on, exactly like the, 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 the car, you know, the real Snow White and some dwarfs. And uh, we had masks on, rubber masks. And it was always oh, great, I used to go on the ice place, you know. And uh, I was dopey. <laughs> <laughs> and at school I was called Titch. Yeah, nobody, nobody called me Ken. And if anybody did, I never turned around. I thought it was Titch all the time. I was just talking to the, the, the Penny there. I wish I'd kept the name Titch, because it would have been a good name, wouldn't it? Titch Baker. It would have rang off quite easily. And uh, some, Kenny Baker's different. But at the time, see Kenny Baker, the trumpet player, with Ted Heath. If you're any jazz fans out here, don't I? You know Kenny Baker, good, good trumpet player. I used to, I'm a big band enthusiast, you know, with Eric Delaney was at Blackpool, and 
We used to go to the um, uh, Ted Heath concerts at the Winter Gardens, Gerald Lowe, G Joe Loss, Ken McIntosh, all the old jazz, you know, good stuff. Dance. When, when you used to dance with a, a lady with your arms round her, <laughs> they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know what the day it is these days, do they? Uh, you, don't dance, put, you don't put your arms around a girl when you dance with a man, do <laughs> Anyway, that's what I did for a while, and I teamed up with Jack. Jack and I, we got a, concert, uh, a contract to tour Europe in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs on ice. And we were in, in, in Paris at the time, at the Place Republic. Uh, theatre there. Uh, what was it? I've forgotten the name of the theatre now. In the past of the Republic, anyway. And, it, and the ice kept melting. We couldn't keep the ice. And the uh, the queen of the show was called Jacqueline de Bief. Big, very popular ice skater. Called Jacqueline de Bief. And she kept going, Mary. And you know what Mary means, I <laughs> They, um, they know all the bad words. Because <laughs> uh, the ice kept melting, we couldn't keep the ice. And, the, and then also, Snow White was pregnant. <laughs> and it wasn't me. <laughs> so there you go, so the, so the show folded. Folded round our ears, you know. And my partner, Jack, were not, I, I missed a bit with Jack and I were at Wembley, you know, the first one. And uh, Jack would play bashful. And he got married and he got two kids and I wasn't married. So he said, look, I'll tell you what, you go with the show and I'll stay in Margate. With, 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 uh, uh, I forgot the name. Marjorie. Marjorie, that's it, March. And to, then he had two kids and uh, so he wanted to pack it in and, and just go home, you know, and get an ordinary job like everybody else. So I get with the ice show in to go to go t all around the country, and that, that's when we were in Paris, you see. And it, and it just melted away, and I had nothing left. I'd lost my partner, I'd lost my family, you know, really, my mum and I was in all kinds of trouble again. And then uh, I thought, well, what am I going to do now? So I, 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 I teamed up with a little guy called Rusty Goff. I don't know if you know Rusty, any of you, do you? He, he's a little guy. And he was in the uh, in, well, whatever we were in, Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. And uh, he, I said, what do you do, Rusty? And he could play piano, he could read music, and he could write music. So and he was only a little guy like me. So uh, we teamed up with quite a good-looking man, you know, called the Minitoners. That's what I was with Jack. But Jack packed me. So now I've got Rusty with me. So we get a, con a contract to go to Glasgow, up north in, in Glasgow. And, he, and Rusty said, I'm not going to go to Glasgow, I'm, I'm packing up, I'm going on my own. I said, you can't do that, you can't walk out of a contract to go on your own. At least do Glasgow with me, and then we'll see where we go from there, see? So we go up to Glasgow, and uh, I'm, I'm the Wizard of Oz, you know, the wee, and they call me the wee Wizzy. The wee Wizzy with the wee Moothy, the harmonica. And uh, it was a good scene though, with, with the Rocket Berries. Do you remember the Rocket Berries? Don't you remember the Rocket? They were a Birmingham group, the Rocket Berries. Yeah. No, no, it didn't remember. They were a good, good group. You know, Ozzy Osgood was with the Black Sabbath, wasn't he? Ozzy. Hey? Osborne. Ozzy Osborne. No, that was good, man. Who was always good? Football player, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll keep digressing, don't I? But there we go, so that's my life in the show business, more or less. Got, then I got married, I met a girl in um, Preston. I took her to see the show in Morecambe. And got, I met her in July, and we got married in December. A little dwarf lady called Eileen. And uh, we were off, we were, we, 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 we got Birmingham, we went to the uh, Hearst Street, the Hippodrome Hearst Street here in Birmingham. The Albany Hotel, we just changed the name now, I know. It's by that flyover bit in the Hearst Street. In, in the ring over there, there's a, the Albany Hotel. What's it called now? Anyway, we were there for our first night, you see, and Donald Pierce was in the, in the hotel. You remember Donald Pierce? By a babbling brook or something. 
And they said, what are you, I don't know, Kenny, I'm with. And the boy said, hey, what are you doing here? I've just got married today in Preston. And we're on our way to Paynton in Devon for Snow White on ice in, in, in Devon. Oh, he said, well, where is she? I said, she's upstairs. Oh, he said, go and get her, we'll get another bottle of champagne. And so needless to say, we got pissed again. Well, <laughs> I was still pissed from the wedding. <laughs> and, uh, and then that night, my, my wife Eileen had, had an epileptic fit, you see, because she had epilepsy. And I'd never seen one before, and it was a bit frightening. If you've never seen one, it's, it scares you to death, you know. But I got used to them eventually, and, uh, you know, if anyone has anything like this, it's, you just lay them down and make sure you don't lay them on their side. And, and, and they've just got to go on with it, you know, and get on with it and get out of it as quickly as they can. But it's, it's, it's not easy to, so, but you get used to the things like that. And uh, that, was, that was it, Arlene and me. So we, we, we were together for 25 years. And we had two kids, got two boys, both normal size kids, you know, or men. They're 40, 40 year old now. And they're as tall as you guys. And uh, what happened then, where, where am I, where am I? Um, well, that was, that was Rusty. Oh, well, oh, that's right, that's right. Rusty left me after Glasgow, and he went on his own, you see. So I phoned up Marge in Bushy, in Hertfordshire, and I said, where's Jack? She said, he's in Germany. I said, what's he doing in Germany? She said, he's doing Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs on ice in German. <laughs> and I said, well, well, the silly boy, he left me in Paris, because he didn't want to do it in French. And now he's doing it in German, you know. But anyway, you couldn't get a job outside of the business, you know. It's not easy, is it, to get it? Just when you don't know any, you've got no, no training for anything, really. And just to be an odd job thing. If you're going to cash registers, you've got a job delivering cash registers, you know, that ring, ding, they ring bells, I mean, they couldn't carry them, they're so heavy. And in the end, he had to give that up. So I found him up and I said, well, Rusty's left me now, so do you want to come back in the act? So I came back in the act, so we resumed the same act, the double act that we had called the Minitones. And he put the suit on. He said, I must be growing. And what we'd done, we'd altered the legs for, <laughs> for Rusty. And then he, he put the same suit back on again, and he was two inches shorter in the leg, and he knew what he was growing. <laughs> So that was that. And then we, we, we lived in Bushy, Hertfordshire, eventually, Jack and me. He moved up from Margate, and I moved down from Birmingham, from Solihull. When I got married, I lived in Solihull. Hampton Lane in, in Solihull. And we both moved down to Bushy, because that was where most of the world was. And uh, in, the, in the southeast, clubs, pubs, and whatever, you know. Plus, we were near the studios for the commercials and uh, bits of filming that we did. And eventually I did about 20 films. I did uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. I did Sleeping Beauty. I did uh, Circus of Horrors. One of the horrors I was. And then, <laughs> and then, and then I did, we did quite a few movies. And then we got lucky, we did, I did Labyrinth and Dark Crystal. Uh, Jim Henson was around in those days. The guy that did the Muppets. And he gave us quite a lot of work, you know, for little people in, in characters and creatures. But we were always inside something, you know, we, were never, we never saw our faces. It could be anybody really, couldn't it? And uh, didn't particularly like it, but we are going to get paid for it. You think, well, we might as well do it, you know. So this is what we were doing in, in the London area. And we got lucky with Star Wars. You know, my agent got a phone call from another agent. Saying there's somebody called George Lucas in London looking for someone to go inside a little robot that they've called R2-D2, which hadn't been made by then, it was just in the drawing, a drawing office. And they, and they said, well, do you want to go down and get, see if you can get the job, you know, in Star Wars? I said, well, I can't leave Jack, you know, because he'd got two, uh, two kids, you know, and he, he needed the, the money. So he said, well, take him with you. And I went down there. And I walked in the room with George Lucas and one or two other, Gary Kurtz and one or two other people from the Star Wars uh, Empire, as you might call it. 
And they went, oh yeah, he'll do. And that was it. <laughs> that was my audition. Best audition ever. Yeah, I was just the right size, really, that's all. I didn't want a big, oh, could you? you'd never get anybody else in there. I was very lucky, really. And when I went to America, I met about oh, 150 at least little people in, 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 on, in California. And I thought, well, how the hell did I get this part with all these other little people in America? And to this day, I don't know how I got the part, really. Dead lucky, really. And then we did Time Bandits with um, Terry Gilliam. And to me, that was my favourite film, really, of all the films that I did do, because it was good fun, Terry Gilliam's film, The Time Bandits. Anybody seen The Time Bandits? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm good. I played Fidget. Fidget the Midget. <laughs> and uh, that was a good, good, a lot, I really enjoyed that film. And Jack was in it, of course. And Jack was in Star Wars. He was, he was a praying mantis. Now, how do you pray a, a praying mantis? Yeah. <laughs> and then another scene, he was a box walking across the set with lip, all you see is a box and the legs. That was Jack, apart. <laughs> Get some weird and wonderful bits to, to do, honestly. Did you ever watch the film with him, sort of like, he's there saying, that's me, in there? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you in the wood? No, as you know. It's like these Ewoks, they come out of the woodwork, Ewoks. <laughs> There's plenty, the so good for them. And they, they probably weren't Ewoks, but nobody knows. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Didn't you play an Ewok as well? Really? I think you were. Yeah. Oh, you? No, you. I, I've, got, I've got one hearing aid in there, it's only in the scene, this is what I can. Did you not play an Ewok as well? Yeah, yeah. I played Papaloo. Yeah. As I was, they wanted all the Ewoks they could get, you know, all the to fight the, the, the stormtroopers. Here he is, one on that there. He must have escaped somehow. <laughs> These guys are crazy, aren't they? Fancy walking about right now, eh? <laughs> In this weather. What do you do when you want to go for a pee? <laughs> See a little bit of trickling water going down the pavement. Anyway, that, uh, that's about all I've got to say to you, mate. Eh? my lifelong history and uh, the show business. And uh, I enjoyed doing the act with Jack, the mini tones. That, that was my, really, my, my, you know, basically that was me. And, that, and all the movies are like extras. And you just go for one, if you're lucky, you get one to the next and keep it, keep it going, you know. But I enjoyed doing the West End. I was in, uh, I was in Churchill's nightclub for a while. I was at the Stock Club in Swallow Street, Churchill's Club in Bond Street, uh, Paul Raymond's place. I was offered the job as a doorman at, at, the, at the Raymond Review Bar. Imagine me, he said, I'll, I'll make you, I'll get you an overcoat and a top hat. And I thought, I don't fancy standing outside that Raymond Review Bar, at that passage. Do you know what I mean? And it was bloody freezing in the winter, imagine. No, I said, no, thank you, I don't look fancy that. So I didn't. <laughs> but, uh, it's about the only job I've been offered, really, but, uh, as, as you might call a job. You know. Might make a lot of money in, in, uh, in tips. But there's no road, you see, it's just up a, a passageway. So there was no direct communication with taxis and stuff like that, so it wouldn't have been a very good job, I think. But that's about it, really. I can't think of anything else I mean, you might be interested in. Can we do a few questions? Questions and answers, yeah. Would you like any questions? I can try and answer. Can I kick off with one? Yeah, go ahead. Can I ask, why, was, why is Time Bandits your favourite film? That because that was me. Yeah. Like, my part was... No, nothing, yeah. That was fidget. But, I mean, I was acting for one or, you know, I'm not an actor, really. But I was acting as, as oh, I did Amadeus, all about Mozart. That was quite a good film. Well, they were all good films. For Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, well, it, it's a. Don't mind if I. Uh, there are not many kids in on it. Yeah, are there? Oh, oh. oh well, you're a big kid, aren't you? Yes, I don't say. What? <laughs> Whatever you were going to say. What? <laughs> well, I will. I'm going to say the story. I was, on, I was in Hunchback of Notre Dame with David Suchet. You know, David, anybody knows David Suchet, don't they? Uh, and. Uh, Leslie Andale, she was a lady, and 
Anthony Hopkins was the uh, Archbishop of Notre Dame. So in Notre Dame, the French um, church, whatever it is. And what happened was, uh, in, the, in the film, it was done at uh, Shepperton Studios. And because I lived down there with Jack at the time, and this is one of the movies that came up. And I got this part of, as, a, as a thief with David Suchet. I was David Suchet's mate. The two of us were both thieves. And a, a belt with a knife and to use the knife to cut open and cut... cut a cut purse. Whatever. Yeah, cut purse. Yeah. What did he say? Cut purse. <laughs> cut purse. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit deaf in this thing, isn't I? <laughs> anyway, well, I mean, I, Anthony Hopkins throws a big burning girder off the top of Notre Dame and it hits David Suchet and he dies on the steps and he's dead, then. And I'm his mate, and I thought, well, I better go and see if he's got any money in his purse. So I drew my knife out, see. And I, went, and I looked around, there's nobody looking at me, so I bent down to cut the, the money off. As I bent down, I farted. <laughs> and the big loud one. And it was a night shoot. And everything was quiet and dark. And as I bent over to do this, I farted. And nobody moved an eyelid. <laughs> Nobody said a word. I couldn't believe it. And I stood up and the guy went, cut. And David Suchet got up and said, who the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a funny bit, that one. But uh, I've done some good films, one way or another, you know. I did Sleeping Beauty in Tel Aviv, out in Israel. Went to Jerusalem and all the places around Israel. Israel, nice place, lovely, Tel Aviv. But um, it's a dangerous area in the Middle East, you know. There, there's some terrible things going on there now in there. Beirut and, you know, it's, it's, and, and we were in Libya, we did our act. Jim, Jack and I did our act in Libya to the Americans. Americans have got in Turkey, we're in Turkey. And we got on the plane to come back from Istanbul or uh, Constantinople, as it used to be called. And we're, we're in the plane. And I looked out the window and I said, hey, look, Jack, there's a case. One case sitting on the, on the tarmac at the airport in, in Could you have saw it? Because there was all our props and gear and stuff in there, you know. And strange people from these. And I stayed in a nice hotel and I asked for a boiled egg and it came up with a raw. And, and, and then the toast was like, Solid, you know. Yeah, it's strange. Anyway, I don't, I don't, I don't care for the Middle East. It's, it, it's, it's nice and it's not nice. You never know what to expect there, really. Tel Aviv was nice. I must, I must admit that was beautiful. Right on the, on the beach we were, and the whole of the end there. And there was movies that's going being made over there all the time. Ch uh, Golan, the Golan was the uh, uh, studios. Um, and that's about all I can tell you about that, really. Nothing else. Lots of actors and actresses. M M Morgan Fairchild was was uh, Sleeping... She was the Queen. And Sleeping Beauty was... Um, uh, Italian lady. Daughter of... Uh, who was that beautiful actress from Italy? Gina Lola Brigida. Or Sophia Loren. One of those two. And the, the daughter was the, was Sleeping Beauty, and a Morgan Fairchild was an American TV girl, wasn't she? And we did the film and, and, in, in Tel Aviv, and, and I was there for about three weeks. Came back to England, and I took my wife out there. She came out, and uh, Eileen came out, and then we were, when we were we were sitting at home having a cup of tea one afternoon, and Morgan Fairchild pulled up in a taxi. And she got out of the taxi. I thought we were just in time for a cup of tea. So said, and she came in and sat down. We were, we were drinking tea. I said, what's, what's that taxi doing out there? She said, it's mine. I said, where from? She said, uh, uh, Heathrow. I said, what, is he taking over? She said, yeah. I said, it cost you a bloody fortune. You know, didn't it? It didn't have cost a lot of money in our taxi. And we, because we know that, because we, we, we were on a taxi from Houston to Heathrow, 
to do a convention, Star Wars thing, at the Radisson Hotel there. And the, the taxi fare was more than a train fare from Preston. I don't believe all the taxis. They charge what they, what they feel like, I mean. There's two girls in the back there, I don't know, what are they supposed to be out about them? All dressed up. Who are you? Catwoman and Harley. Oh, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> and any more questions? Anybody got any questions? Yeah, follow up. Um, is it true you have photos inside R2-D2? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come up with these coaches, they're all the fun. Yeah, the, that was the Lee Electrics boys. Lee Electrics, they were based in um, in Wembley. And, and um, they were funny, they were all cockney armies, you know. And they, they, put, they stuck a lot of naked women inside the, the head of R2-D2. <laughs> But I was quite side trying to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that only lasted about a week, a week, no, a couple of days or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that's a true story. Yeah. Any more? Any more questions? Anyways. No. No. Really? Yeah. What would you say the difference is between uh, George Lucas and Terry Gilliam as directors? Oh, well, well, Terry's crazy, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he's a funny guy, Terry. He is, he really is a funny guy. George is a lovely man, I mean, I mean he, had, he had a lovely wife called Marcia when we did the first Star Wars, and she just disappeared. She walked out on, on George. Can you imagine? He's a multi-millionaire now, and she walked away. Poor old George, he, 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 he was going out with Linda Ronstadt for a while, so they tell me. But he's not married again. He's got a, little, he's got a boy, and his name's um, Scott, I think. Is it Scott? Scott Lucas? I think it is. Anyway, he's got a son called Scott. But uh, he's a nice bloke, George. He's really, well, he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? He's no fool. But Terry's a scatterbrain, he's a little bit. He just, you know, it, it's, it's good fun to work for. It's good. He said, how are we going to finish this film? I said, what, what film? He said, Time Bandits. I well, it's your film. How are you going to finish it? He didn't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, what can we do to finish what? So uh, anyway, what he eventually did, he had Sean Connery, was the, the king. Remember that? Remember Sean Connery? Yeah. And, well, no, you remember him, I mean, I meant his part in the film. Mm. <laughs> so he had the, the kid in the film, a little boy, was, well, there were six of us little guys. And the last film shots, more or less, were, he was back with his family again, this boy. Yeah. And he didn't like his mum and dad. So he, he blew him up in the kitchen. <laughs> he did something with the kitchen and it blew up. And the fire engine came. And Sean Connery was one of the firemen. And he just looked around and went, right, that, that's all it was. You know, he did a bit with it as, as the king earlier on in the film. And that's how they, they closed the film, you know. And I was on a tube um, in London one day on, a, on the underground there, you know. And about six kids sitting there, and I could hear them whispering, and I could hear him, and, and we're talking about me, you see. And I thought, I'm, they're going to ask me something in a minute, you know. And then they had little smart little uniforms and ties and 